Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and this is a subscriber request. Today's request comes from Rachel Barton Pine and her daughter Sylvia Pine. Rachel approached me a few weeks ago with her daughter Sylvia's string quartet, where she had a violin cadenza that needed to be shown in the other three parts, which were playing a sort of a sequence of tremolo chords underneath that cadenza. Now, the best solution to this was to actually show the cadenza in the linked parts for the other string parts, and you would just have that just for those cadenza bars. Now, Rachel was in a hurry. I was kind of busy, so I ended up just doing it myself. I fixed her file and sent it back to her, but I realized uh, that I didn't have a video that actually shows you how to do this. I do have a lot of tutorials that show all of the techniques involved in doing this. I've just never put them together in one place. So I thought that this would make for a good practical lesson and also a good subscriber request video. Before I get into that, I just want to show you how you can submit a request for a video. First of all, you must be a subscriber, so click the subscribe button on YouTube and or sign up for the mailing list by clicking this link on the website. Then just send me an email with your request. Lastly, if your request makes it to video, please do your best to donate to the cause whatever you can. It would be most appreciated. More details can be found following the link in the description below or directly on the subscriber request page of my website. Now the score that Rachel and Sylvia sent me obviously was a string quartet, but I did realize that there could be some other complexities if you're involving transposing instruments. So what I did is I took that Mozart clarinet concerto that I've used several times in this series and I've just sort of added my own cadenza to it with um, advanced apologies to Mr. Mozart. I'm sorry for um, destroying your piece, but I did add just a made, made up clarinet cadenza in the middle here at bar 128. The other thing that I did is I actually changed the horns. Um, they used to be horns in A. I just switched these over to um, the standard horns in F. I'm also hiding the key signature and showing accidentals like you would um, in the old French horn tradition. So this just gives us different transpositions. You have your concert key instruments, obviously flute, bassoon, and strings. You have uh, instruments in F, and you have your clarinet, which is actually in the key of A here. So um, this will just, uh, I'm going to show you uh, something specific with this later on, which is why I changed these to horns in F. Anyway, so how are we going to do this? Our parts themselves, if we go to the violin one part, obviously only has the single violin one part. It does not have the cadenza, but you can see here that it would be very helpful to show the clarinet cadenza here so that they know exactly when to switch um, uh, these notes, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to go back to the score, going into the score manager, and I'm actually going to add a whole new staff here uh, below the clarinet and A. I'm just going to choose add instrument. We're actually going to choose a blank staff. Just choose blank staff there. And you'll see that it gets added to the score. Don't worry about that. It messes up the formatting. We're just going to, we're going to hide that later. So it doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm going to go find uh, bar 128 again. Uh, somewhere over here. There we go. And all I'm going to do is just copy the cadenza into that blank staff, just like that. And there we go. This way, this uh, entire blank staff, the only thing it has is a cadenza. It doesn't have the rest of the clarinet part, right? While I'm here, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to add a text here. Um, and I'm going to call this uh, just clarinet in A so that we know that that's the clarinet that's playing that. Let me just put it below here. There we go. Um, all right. And once I've done that, once I've got this set up the way that I want it, I'm actually just going to hide this from the score. So with the staff tool, double click that staff uh, to get to the staff attributes and do force hide staff in score only and collapse. And it will go away as if nothing ever happened. All right, so now I'm going to go back up into the document menu. If you go into your edit part, you'll actually see that when you add that in the score manager, it will add a part. It's calling it part 13 because it was a blank staff, and this, I guess, is the 13th part that I've added. Um, we don't need that, uh, so we'll go into our manage parts window. Um, again, if this is showing like this, just make sure you edit part definition uh, is checked so that you can see everything. You can actually delete that part 13. We don't need it. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the new staff, which is this one, staff one hidden, I'm going to add that to the parts that need it. In that case, it's the, um, in this case, it's the four string players and the two horn players. So we'll just go to our violin and we'll staff one hidden, add to part. And I also want to make sure it's on top. You can see that the order is going to be here. So we'll just press the move up button to get it to the top. And I'll do the same with the other string parts. Move up, viola, add to part, move up, cello, 
didn't do anything in the bass, so I don't need it there. And then we'll do the same thing in the horns. Staff one, add to part, move up. Horn two, add to part, move up. All right, there you go. Now, just like that, what will happen is that all of those parts, violin one part now, has two staffs to it. It has the, the blank staff and it has the, um, the regular violin one staff. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unlock all of this. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna uh, make this Q size. So let's just go into our resize tool and just click somewhere in the staff here. And what we're gonna do is resize to 75%, make sure it says systems one through the end, click okay. Um, and just to, oh, let me go here, just to uh, clean this all up, I'm just gonna respace, I'm gonna update my layout. There we go. All right, so now we've got our Q size staff and let's go over to where the cadenza is. So you'll see it right here. Now the one th trick to this, and maybe this is you know me or whatever, but I, I think it's best if this particular cadenza, um, however many systems it ends up on, sort of is on its own system. So you can manipulate the systems a little bit here. I'm just gonna move that particular measure up here so that it's on the same system. And then with the cadenza, I wanna make sure that it sort of starts and ends by itself. So let's see what we can do here. So this is fine, right? This is uh, one system. This is two measures here. This is two, but we have one left over. Let's do this. Let's move this one down and let's just put this on its own system. So now the entire cadenza systems, there's four systems here and they all just happen to be, um, or that I force them to be um, on their own systems like that, all right? Uh, we can also unlock this. And then what I'm gonna do, now that I have this sort of isolated onto its own four systems, I can actually select the entire the entirety of that uh, blank staff, go to the staff tool and just right click somewhere and do hide empty staffs. And again, all this is gonna get wonky, so just update layout. And once we get there, here we go. So now we have you know, the single line of violin going all the way through up to 127. And then right here we have uh, two staves of, um, of material here uh, for the uh, cadenza. And you might have to do some adjustments. Obviously this is in a different key, so some things are gonna be a little bit weird. All right, and that's all there is to it. That's how you would do that. This is all you need to do on the um, violin one part. Now let me just go into the horn one part here. I'm gonna repeat that same process, so just bear with me a little bit. Let me just unlock. Uh, let's do this. We're going to resize to 75%. All right, let's just, again, respace, update layout, make sure that's all good. And then check out the cadenza. Okay, it starts on its own system, that's good. But let's do the same thing here. Let's just make this its own thing. All right, we'll unlock that, good. And then just select here, and we're just gonna hide all the empty staves. All right, just again, update layout, just make sure we're all good. Yeah, so there we go. So now we have the, uh, the cadenza for the clarinets uh, above the French horn. Now, this is where uh, I wanted to show you something with transpositions. What's interesting here is that obviously this blank staff is in concert key, so it's gonna show in concert key in the uh, the French horn part. Even though the French horn is showing the transpose part, this part isn't transposed. So what you end up with is a staff in F and a staff in C. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's the correct way to show this in this particular instance, but my instinct tells me that it's not. My instinct tells me that I actually want to transpose the clarinet into the French horn key so that the French horn player looks at it in the same key that they're playing in, right? That seems to be a little bit more logical in my opinion. Again, it, I could be wrong. It could be that um, this is actually the way you wanna do it. Not 100% certain. But let's say you do wanna transpose this into the French horn key. Well, if you go into the score manager while you're viewing a part, right? You will end up seeing just the staves that exist for that particular part. The problem is if I were just to take this blank staff and go over to transposition and choose the F horn transposition, it's actually gonna change this everywhere and you don't want that for the, the violin parts that you just created, right? So that would be a problem. Except uh, what you might not realize that is that in the score manager, when you're viewing it from a linked part, you get an extra option right here in the bottom left called unlink all instruments in this part. And the this part is the important thing. 
it's telling you that if you check this, now all of these instruments here are independent in this particular linked part from the other parts. So I can do anything to these instruments, including all of the definitions down here, and it will only affect this particular part. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the blank staff, I'm gonna go over here to transposition, I'm gonna choose the French horn transposition, which is F, and you'll see when I do that, now all of a sudden it's in the key of E, which is where it would uh, normally go. And with the French horn, I'm not showing the key signature. So if I also wanted to do that on the cadenza here, I could actually do the same thing, just hide key signature and show accidentals on that blank staff as well. And what you end up with, uh, you know what, let's lock this first before I do that. Go back here one more time. Um, there we go what you end up with is the uh, cadenza in the French horn key shown in the same way that you're showing the French horn without the key signature, but showing all of the accidentals. Um, so that's a, a nifty little uh, trick uh, if you wanna do it this particular way. Now, the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is that when you do this, when you make this, uh, this staff 75%, some weird things can happen, particularly with um, uh, system objects, uh, system expressions in particular. So you notice the cadenza here, it's actually a smaller size than the other tempo markings. This is because the cadenza is attached to a staff that's at 75%. So the cadenza text is actually at 75. Now, normally if you select that and press shift return, you can get to the expression assignment and you can uncheck the scale expression with attached note. And that would make it go back to its normal size. However, this only applies when it's attached to a note, but a system expression is attached to a staff, and there is no option here called scale expression with attached staff. It would be nice if there was, but there is not. Um, so that will not work in this particular case. Um, so if this is something that bothers you, if you really don't like the fact that those sizes are different, there's a couple things you can do here. Let me just show you one trick here. If you go into the tempo marks uh, expression here and go into the edit categories option, what you can actually do is change the score list. So if you go in here and see where it says the score column here versus the part column, and in the parts column, it's check to top staff. What you could actually do is check bottom staff instead and click OK. And what that will do is it will actually attach the tempo to the bottom staff. Now, this is not gonna matter when there's only one staff because the one staff is the bottom staff as it is the top staff, um, so that would be fine. And then you can literally just drag it up if you want to. Now, this is not gonna work, however, if you do have grand staff instruments like a piano part or a harp part in your score, you're gonna have to move all of these tempo marks to the top in your grand staff, which might be uh, too much of a pain. So another type of solution here would be to do something different. We can actually just add, let's say a technique text, any staff attached expression. So we'll do the same thing, cadenza. Make sure that it's stylized the same. So we'll bold face it and we'll make it size 14. This way it'll match the, uh, the tempo marks. And assign it here, um, sorry, assign it to the bottom staff, right? And basically do the same thing, just drag it up. And what we can do here is actually just hide this particular uh, iteration of that cadenza tempo text. Um, so this one is still attached to the bottom staff, but you, you know it's not gonna mess up all your grand staff instruments like that. Um, of course, just realize if you do change the <laughs> distance, it's gonna actually change the where that cadenza text is, et cetera. So that's another sort of a hack to getting around this particular problem. You would have to do that for things like rehearsal marks as well, um, tempo alterations if you wanted to do that. Now you can see that my Allegro and my cadenza text are the same size. Just a small little detail uh, if you want to, uh, to fix that. One last thing I'm gonna mention. Let me go back to my cadenza at 128. And this is sort of a, a bonus tip, uh, super technical tip. If you've gotten this far, you're obviously familiar enough with Finale and how to create these cadenzas. You can see there's actually a lot of extra notes in what is normally a 2-2 measure. And there's two ways to do this. Um, the first way is to actually just change the uh, time signature of the entire measure. In this case, I made it 17-8, but I, uh, under the more options, I made sure that it was still using a different time signature for display, the 2-2 time signature that had been uh, going in the previous bars. When this is set to the same time signature as the previous bar, then no time signature will show because Finale is acting as if there's no time signature change, even though technically there is. It's now a 17-8 measure. 
Um, however, when you do this, you know, you add your whole note and in this bar after the whole note, there's actually a bunch of uh, extra ha hidden rests, right? So that's sort of the trick uh, to doing this, making it appear as if it's 2-2, two, two, even though technically it's 17-8, right? That's the first way to do this. And if you're going to be uh, queuing a cadenza like this in linked parts, this is the way you really have to do this. There is another way to do this, uh, which involves independent time signatures. You can actually create a staff style that would set the uh, particular um, measures to have an independent time signature right here. Um, and then what you do is you, you know, everything else is 2 2, but the time signature for, for this particular measure for just the clarinet is 17 8. I don't recommend doing that if you need to cue this in any of the parts. First of all, yes, you can copy the staff styles, but you can't actually copy the, the time signature. So you'd have to recreate all those time signatures in the extra staff that you create. In addition to that, it causes a lot of havoc with multi-measure rest, so much so that in my experimentation with this, I would just write it off. I would not do this because it just messes up the multi-measure rest so badly. So don't do it like this. Um, make the whole measure 17-8 and then just fake the whole notes. So that's what I'm getting at. Don't do the independent time signature if you're going to try and do this. So just a super extra bonus technical tip there. Um, and the other thing I should have done here is you always want to make sure that this is set to show only on parts. Yeah, there you go. And that will look correctly in the horn part as well. Yeah, there you go. All right, so long video. I know it's slightly complex, um, but I just wanted to thank uh, Rachel Barton Pine and Sylvia Pine for sending me the file and you know asking me to do this and, and uh, giving me the opportunity to create this uh, subscriber request video. So, all right, that's all there is to it. You know, if you enjoyed this video, please visit www.conqueringfinale.com to find full tutorials categorized by topic. As always, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you soon on the next video.